All right, good show. That's it. Yeah, Scooter, great show tonight. Thanks. Thanks. It was, you were great, Dick. It's well, you, funny. The music Very was funny. wonderful. What do you say we celebrate? You and me, let's go out, paint L.A. red, get some drinks, huh? Paint the town red, oh, you man, and me? I can't, I can't. I got a date tonight. I got a date. Sorry. Well, all right, I'll just hang around the studio alone. I tell you what, I got this new thing, VCR Companion. You'll love it. You'll love it, really. VCR Companion. You'll take care of it, yeah. All right, well. Good luck, big guy. I'll have, see you next week. Have a good time, Scooter. VCR Companion. Well, let's see. <clears throat> Hi, I'm Trish. I'll be your VCR video companion for this evening. We're going to have a really great time, so let's just get started, okay? Okay. Oh, it's you. It's me? What do you mean? Oh, it's me. Uh, you know what? I just remembered I have to be home early, so what? maybe we just better get going and have a quick dinner, okay? Well, I've got the whole evening. What are you talking are you about? Are sure you want to wear your hair like that? We'll, we'll just go someplace what? quiet. What? You, uh, Scooter, what's wrong with this thing? <laughs> Chew! Oh! You know, I must be coming down with something. Maybe we should just do this some other night. What Trish, are you Trish, love, who are you talking to? Uh, just another one. Who's that? This is my roommate, Randy. Roommate? Hello! Oh, hi. Welcome to Camp Midnight. We're glad you're with us here on our comfortable little show that's almost in the middle of the night. We've got a lot of fun people lined up coming on tonight. And speaking of fun people, let's say hello to Scooter Peach and the band. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Scooter, I am I'm so excited. You know, we have received a very special personal Camp Midnight letter from Ed McMahon here. Does this mean we can win up to $10 million? Well, I think so. Take a look at this. Ed McMahon actually sent this directly to us. I want to just say Camp Midnight is the missing $10 million winner. <laughs> and so if we've got it here, we're going to hang it up on our wall or do whatever you have to do. And hopefully, I'll tell you what, does Ed come to your house uh, at Scooter and give you this money? Personally, he does. does he? I, All right. I heard that. If we win, we'll take $3 million and no knock on the door from Ed McMahon. How's that, huh? <laughs> but let's put this up here because this, I got a feeling this is going to really be a big deal for us right here. And I, I don't think a lot of people got those either. So let's look at that. <laughs> Well, you know, folks, uh, I want to get off to something right off the bat because there's something that has just blossomed into a full-blown big deal here at Camp Midnight, and that is a little thing we started a few shows ago called Things That Sound Dirty But Really Aren't. Um, you've been sending them in just like clockwork. We've got faxes, we've got mail, we've got all types of things, and we have chosen three tonight that we want to present to you that we really like. And uh, let's see, I believe I have those first from from Heather Wolf of Tampa, Florida. Heather sent in things that sound dirty but really aren't. And she says, Succotash. Yeah. Huh? I think so. I believe so. Jack Brill of Milwaukee, Wisconsin sends us, uh, oh, here it is, Pussy Willow. Yes, okay. And finally, uh, Bob Hutchison of Manhattan, New York, uh, sent in a very special one, and he suggests that we mention Uranus. <laughs> so, as even a child could see, it's things that sound dirty but really aren't. And uh, if you've got those hanging around the house, you say, Dick, I've got something that sounds dirty but really aren't then send that to us here in care of uh, Camp Midnight. Post Office Box 189, Hollywood, California. Uh, P.O. Box uh, 978 is the zip code. Our fax number, if you'd like to do that, 818-843-FAXS. That's the way it goes. We'd love to hear, uh, see him, so send him to us and we'll get you on. Oh, by the way, don't let me forget, do I have my, uh, my little, I don't think I have my little thing, my, uh, what we send them, if they do uh, send it and we use it. Okay. 
I don't see it here, but I'll tell you what, if you do send it in and we use it on the air, we have a, an 8x10 picture of Peter O'Toole that we'll be sending you, okay? So that'll be good. You know, uh, ooh, you know, I don't know about you, Scooter, but whenever I hear the word Uranus, I get an insatiable hunger, don't you? Mm -hmm. For what, So, Dick? um, I, how about some Thai food tonight? Everybody okay on that? I think it'd be great. It's a, ooh, I just felt one heck of a chill. A draft. Did, did, Scooter, did you feel a draft come through here? No, but I'm suddenly overcome by an overwhelming sense of dread, though. Ah, I don't know. <laughs> well, who are you? I'm the ghost who haunts the studio. <laughs> oh, well, uh, so how can I help you? Come on, you're scared. I'm the ghost who haunts the studio, Dick. Listen, listen, I've got to make a phone call. I don't have time for this right now. Uh, excuse me, okay? Ah, stink. Mm. <laughs> wow, I'll tell you what let's do. Let's give Tommy Tangs a call and order up some food tonight. I've got the number right here. Let's see. Now, I, I'm living in, in this L.A. you got to dial across different area code zones here. So let me see if I can do this. Uh, hey, what's hey, uh, 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 We got uh, Tommy Tang has got some great Thai food. And let's call. And I think I, I, I've looked at the menu here, and I want to get some... Hello, Tommy Tang. Hello. Uh, is this Tommy Tang's, as you just said? What? Is this Tommy Tang's? Yes, it is. Hi, Dick Wilson calling from the Camp Midnight Television Show. How are you? Fine. We, we'd love to order some food from you. Uh, you've got some great stuff over there, some great Thai food, right? You want some Thai food to go? Would that be okay? Can you make it to go? Sure. One moment, please. Can you? Uh-oh. We're, we're on hold at the moment. What I'd like to do is, I, I've picked out something. I'd like to get chicken satay. Okay. Okay. Oh, you're still there. Great. Yeah, We've fine. got about, there's about 50 of us, so uh, we need a lot of chicken satay, I'm afraid. 50 people. Yes, about 50. Oh, I wanted to ask you also, is, uh, is Tommy Tang around there? Would he be able to bring this over in person? Uh, yes, he would. This is a remarkable place. Yeah. Well, don't send it over unless the tankster is bringing it, okay? All right, Tommy Tanks, thank you very much, and you have a wonderful night. Thank you. Okay, good. There it goes. Oh, you know where we are. We're over on Van, you know, you know over at the Camp Midnight Studios here in Van Nuys? All right. Yeah, okay. okay no that, was very, that was very important, wasn't it? Yeah, okay, thank you. There we go. Tommy Tanks, the food is coming. Thank you, sir. I thought I, I didn't mean to cut you off there at the end. Okay, good. Well, the real Tommy Tang will be here, folks. And also we have coming up on Camp Midnight, the lovely Carrie Mitchum will be with us right back in a moment. People coming up, David Strauss will be along, Paul Kreppel, Larry Wilson, Legal Reigns, the group, Don Glute will be in to talk about dinosaurs, and our next guest, actually our first guest of the evening, besides that thing that was in here with some kind of spirit thing earlier, I don't know what that was, our first guest tonight speaks fluent Spanish, cooks a mean leg of lamb, and is movie legend Robert Mitchum's granddaughter. And uh, if that weren't enough, she's currently starring as Donna Logan on The Bold and the Beautiful. Please say hi there, Carrie, to Miss Carrie Mitchum. <laughs> All right. Hey Remember, oh. gentlemen, never be seated before the lady does. Okay. <laughs> How are you, Carrie? Good, thanks. Well, good. Thanks for coming on Camp Midnight. We appreciate it. Mm, thank you for are, having are me. Are you a late night person? Do you stay up late a lot? Uh, yeah. Do you really? <laughs> yeah. yeah. But uh, luckily, Bold and Beautiful is on during the daytime. You work a lot of hours doing that thing. How long have you been on that? Um, two years in March. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. You, I understand that you uh, started out, of course, uh, for the people who have never seen Bold and Beautiful, which isn't very many, you, you play Donald Logan on it. Why don't you tell us what kind of character Donald Logan is? Um, I'm 19, and I... I get in a lot of trouble, but I, I always mean well, you know. Yeah, yeah. Um, my character model nude. <laughs> Wait a minute. Um, 
Let's just stop right here for just a minute now. Did, uh, was this, how did they pull this off? Was this an embarrassing situation? <laughs> Was this an embarrassing situation? Um, yeah, it was. It was very embarrassing. Um, I had a studio. I was in a studio, and they <laughs> I had to wear like little skin-colored underwear, and they paste. Did they? Paste. Go ahead and say it. That's all. Right. You're among friends. Um, material <laughs> to your chest, uh -huh. and um, they just shoot sort of above and below, and and then you can have a back. <laughs> Well, I, I, <laughs> I cried. I yeah. cried. I, was upset I tell you what, that. I'll try that one night so I can relate with you on this, okay? Oh, okay, I want to be here to see that. I'll bet you. <laughs> you won't be missing anything. I understand that when you first got involved with The Bold and the Beautiful, you were up for two roles, Katie or Donna. So right. How did um, they decide which one? Well, was? it's funny because Katie is sort of an introverted girl, and for the first year and a half of the show, they were putting latex pimples on her so she looked like she had acne. This was, you know, their, their Cinderella story or whatever. And Donna was supposed to be just this, like, sexy, um, I don't know, fiery little character. And um, they didn't know if I was um, sexy or pretty enough to be Donna, so... <laughs> I think those people didn't need their jobs, then if they couldn't decide that. <laughs> and then they finally just decided to keep me as Donna, so... Well, great. Well, we're glad he did. We love, love it on there. Well, let's talk some family for a bit. You're the granddaughter of Robert Mitchum. Christopher Mitchum is your father. Um, getting into acting, when you decided to do that, what kind of tips did they have for you? Oh, my father said don't do it, anything but acting. And my grandfather um, didn't really say much at all. I think... Mm -hmm. um, he needed, didn't have any, any, any tip whatsoever, um, He huh? said... Don't pick up any props because you, know, you just have to remember to put them down. <laughs> <laughs> it was about as, as close as he got to giving me advice. <laughs> well, speaking of Robert here for a moment, and we won't have you pick anything up. Um, okay. <laughs> um, what's your favorite Robert Mitchum movie? Um, well, I, I like Night of the Hunter. Yeah. He plays sort of a psycho. Yeah, it's a good psycho. one. Psycho. Huh? Sure. <laughs> Scary one, yeah. yeah. Because He's, he's good. When I was little, he used to um, pretend he was a monster, and I thought for sure he was. He'd roll his eyes back in his head, and my grandmother would play along. She'd say, you know, you would have had another uncle, but Bob ate him. <laughs> and so, <laughs> he, he can be convincing. I love Thunder. Would you, would you tell him Dick likes Thunder Road okay. when you see him next time? Okay, sure, Thunder Road. You grew up, spent some time in Europe growing up, didn't yes. you? Yes. What was that like? I loved it. Um, I, they didn't have... Well, they had it sort of their, their type of Twinkies over there, and I was a Twinkie fanatic when I was a kid, and they had these things called Chromos, which weren't as good, so I missed Twinkies and Marathon Bars. Yeah. <laughs> you, you, I know you had the language down real good while you were yeah. over there. How, now, how long has it been? They made me go to a Spanish-speaking school. Did they, so. Are you still fluent in Spanish? I haven't. I, you know, I can... I can order hamburgers yeah, and yeah. Uh, yeah. ice cream. <laughs> Only the important words remain I after swear, the years. Huh? You know? <laughs> what about horseback riding? You like you've done that for a long time. Yeah, um, I showed for eleven years, and I haven't. I was on the when I, I went to Dartmouth for college mm -hmm. for a year before I dropped out. Um, uh oh. <laughs> mm, uh -huh. what, which was which was the class that broke your back? Was uh, there one class that said I've got to get out of this? Yeah. School? Um, Statistical psychology. Yeah. yeah. Ah, ah. Mm -mm. I don't blame I, uh, you. That was I, the tough one, huh? Yeah. <laughs> You're somewhat of a cook, I understand. Yeah, I like to cook. What kind of things do you like to prepare? I like to cook just about anything. I don't really tell people I cook. I was I was going out with a guy for about two years before he knew I could cook. Mm -hmm. And my godmother said, oh, well, has she cooked for you? And he said, no, she told me she can't cook. And so I found out. And then I had to cook all the time, so I don't. You never saw the inside of a restaurant again, did you, after that? Uh, <laughs> well, the reason I ask is because we've got some hungry segment producers that uh, do a lot of preparation on this show. Here's a picture of them right here in our monitors right now. See those guys? <laughs> Wouldn't you say they need some meat on their bones? Could you prepare, maybe how about a leg of lamb for them sometime? You do a good leg of yeah, lamb, don't you? I do you? very good leg of lamb. All right, that's good. What's your future goals? What do you want to do? What's Carrie Mitchum going to do? Uh-oh. Um... I don't know. I wish I had a crystal ball. <laughs> um, I don't know. Acting? Continue acting? Definitely acting. I, it, you know, it's such a cliche, but it does beat working. <laughs> uh oh, yeah.
Even with those 14 hour days, five days a week, uh, it's mm -hmm. still a good deal. Mm -hmm. Well, Carrie it's Mitchum, fun. you're a lovely person, and thank you for thank coming you. on Camp Midnight. Thank you for having There's me. There's one thing I'd like for you to do before you leave, so we may put it up on our wall of fame. I've Would heard you about please this. bite your cup? Thank you. <laughs> DNS, yes. Uh -huh. Sign that. That's wonderful, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much. It's Carrie Mitchum on Camp Midnight. Paul, <laughs> Crackle, Paul, Crackle, Carrie Mitchum. I'm a ghost. Are you scared? <clears throat> Wet willy. Watch this. I'll take out this whole hallway. I'm gonna, I'm gonna. I tell you, there's that annoying ghost again. I don't know. I don't understand why this has to happen to us in this studio on Camp Midnight. Welcome back. My name's Dick Wilson, your warm, fuzzy host for the evening. Um, our next guests travel as a comedy team, but only require one airline ticket when flying. You go figure it out when we say hello to David Strassman and his friends. <laughs> Thank you. It's great to be here. I'm Dave Strassman, and uh, this is Chuck Wood. Oh, now you're saying the name. What? I'm pissed off, man. I'm pissed. <laughs> I'm pissed. <laughs> but what? When Dick introduced me, he didn't even say the damn name. Okay, Chuck. That's my fault. I was the one who told him what to say. Thanks a lot, Dave. I'm sorry, Chuck. Thanks a lot. You're real considerate. I'm sorry, okay? No wonder you don't have any friends. Chuck, you keep my friends out of this, right, pal? I got friends? Yeah, you have friends. Yeah, some friends. Listen, Chuck, I have plenty of friends who I trust and respect. Like your friend Jim, the guy who dates your girl when you're on the road, like that friend? Now, wait a minute. <laughs> what about Bill, the guy who wrecks your car and borrows money? Did he pay you back, Chuck? Jim and Bill are not on the show tonight. You know why? Because they're out with your girl driving your car, spending your money. <laughs> Next time we do a show, you'll get your introduction, all right? Thank you. You're welcome, jerk. Now, let's do what we're... <laughs> let's do what we're supposed to do. The news. Now clear my throat? Sure, let me, uh, <clears throat> thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> Good evening, and welcome to the news. I'm David Strassman. I'm Chuck Wood for the News of the Nation. Yes, the news of the now, the national news, and now the news. Thank you, Chuck. You're welcome, David. Thank you. You're welcome, Chuck, David. Good evening. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. The top story. Tide laundry detergent has announced today that it is no way related to the South African detergent called apartheid. In case you don't remember, apartheid is the only soap in the world that automatically separates the colors and the white clothes for no apparent reason. <laughs> the Libyan government announced today that a foul smell coming from a suspicious warehouse was not nerve gas, but actually a new perfume they're manufacturing. Chuck has more on this story. It's called Nomar's Passion. It is said to excite the senses, stun the nervous system, but leave buildings standing. There's a new soft drink on the market with an Iranian theme. Chuck has more on this. It's called the Ayatollah Cola. Comes in 16-ounce bottles and is wrapped in a towel. Now, uh, have you tried this new product, Chuck? Yeah, I tried it. Well, how does it taste? Like Shiite. <laughs> We'll be right back with the news. So you feeling a little better about that introduction thing? Not really, Dave. I'm a little, little bummed out, man. You're bummed out? It's my birthday, Dave. Well, well, happy birthday. Why are you bummed out? Well, you know, the age. The age? Well, how old are you? A thousand. Well, you don't look like a thousand years old. You don't have to count the rings on my stump. Okay, wait a minute. Chuck, I don't feel so good. What's with you, huh? Every thousand years, a puppet has to get rid of the negative influences he's created all these years. What are you talking about, Chuck? I have to kill again. <laughs> Wait, what did you say? Nothing? <laughs> Chuck, you see, all them trilliclish puppets have to replenish their energy from the soul of the human being. But Chuck, you think you see the movie Magic? <coughs> yeah, do you think that a puppet could be possessed by a demon? <laughs> Well, do you? Why not? No, you stop this, Chuck. I don't feel so good. No, wait a minute. No. This is not funny. We have a show to do here. I'm talking to you. You stop this, Chuck. I'm not Chuck. I'm No. 
You stop this, you another dice close it. Sears, you stop this right now, Chuck. I said stop this. Chuck. What's going on here, Chuck? Chuck, Chuck, Chuck. I'm talking to the thing, the thing inside of Chuck. Chuck, now who are you? Who are you? Who are you? And what do you want? Want, want, want. I want Santa White. <laughs> but who are you? I am the demon of the Bush administration. But what do you want to get rid of Dan Quayle? <laughs> it's a comedy show. We're here to tell jokes. Two demons walk into a bar. It's not funny. I'll get an exorcist. You've seen too many movies. I'll get a doctor. He's got no insurance. I'll get a chainsaw. Just kidding, Dave. <laughs> scared the hell out of me. So, well, come on, Chuck. It scared me, too. I didn't know if I was ever going to come back. Come back from the other world. I just want to say it's great to be back with all you nice people and my best friend, Dave. Aww. All right, it's nice to have you back, Chuck. Don't tell him. You folks have been great. Thank you very much. Thank you. Hey, good job. Thank you very much. I love this Thank kind you. of stuff. How, how long have you been with Chuck here? I've been with Chuck about 18 years, but uh, I started ventriloquism at the age of 12. Mm -hmm. Are you going to ask me a question? Well, Dave, uh, what about this? Uh, did, did you make Chuck, or did you buy him at some dummy store? Well, I was made in... No, no, I'm going to uh, answer the question. I, I never got to answer one. Well, you just wait your turn. No, Nate, I want to answer this well, one. Guys, no, don't worry about it. Keep guys. out of this, Dickie. No, Chuck, wait, guys. I'm answering the questions for now. You beat it, pal. Oh, you guys, want to leave here? Yeah, okay, up. fine. You want to answer your own questions? Be the big man, is that it? You want your big break, Chuck? Here's your big chance. Go answer the question, okay? Wait a sorry, Dick. I'm sorry. Dave. Come on, man. Be the Dave. big man. Just a minute. Get it. Oh, hold it. Hold it. <laughs> Uh, Dave, Dave, don't leave. Uh, without you here, this thing is just a broken down piece of old wood of some sort. So, do what are you calling a piece of wood, goofball? Thank you, thank you. You can talk? Of course, you can talk. What are you, an idiot or something? Come on. Wait a minute. Ask me a question there. Oh, you're not going to talk to me that way. I'm the Why host not? of this show. No, okay? you're not a host. You're a wimp. Yeah, you're just a piece of maple muffin, is all. It's oh, a maple muffin. Oh, yeah? Yeah, I you had redwood take your reject. Butt and bring it. Whoa. What? What did you say? I had to kick your butt. You're not going to. All right, that does it. You're, you're hey, not no, getting away from this. I'm taking you with me. Uh, uh, that's it, folks. I'll show the dummy. Don't do it, Dick. Don't do it. Pick on somebody your own size, yeah, Dick. Maybe, yeah, Dick, maybe don't you would like to see some friends I've got back here, Dick, huh? Don't do it. Maybe some friends back here in the old wood shop, huh? How about a haircut, huh? How about a haircut? Yeah, okay. Hey, say hello to Mr. Saw. Huh? What do you think about that, huh? Yeah, what's going on here? Oh, uh, Chuck Wood made an awful nice toothpick collection. Mm. Remember, the food is still to come, folks, okay? Right. Um, um, but uh, I, I wanted to let you know that David Strassman is all right. His career can continue. Uh, he'll find dummies everywhere, and um, also he's in on the toothpick business with me also from Chuck. Mm. So that's wonderful. Well, our very next guest makes his living on It's a Living as Sonny the Piano Player. He's a director as well as a performer. He works with stars uh, like Danny DeVito and Meryl Streep in the past. Got some great stories. Please welcome Mr. Paul Kreppel. So we don't need yeah. the microphone. I can That's sign right. if you'd like. Yes, Paul. Uh, we rushed you right out of makeup. Paul, you want to explain what this is? Well, you know, when you go in makeup, they stick these things in here so you don't mess up your shirt. Then right before you come out here, somebody whips them out. 
You messed the shirt up anyway. It goes to dry cleaning. What's the point? I thought I'd leave them in. <laughs> Save a couple of bucks, but I'll get rid of them now. Just a little backstage taste. I was going to have you do a little Vienna Boys Choir stuff there. It looked like that a little bit. Yeah. Well, Paul, thanks for being on Camp Midnight. It's nice to see you. I'm kind of checking with people, the guests we have tonight, to find out if you're a late night person. Yeah. <laughs> Are you a late night person? You stay up? Uh, I am now. We've got a nine month old who still won't sleep through the night. Oh, really? A little vampire blood in her, yes. I think. And that is... Uh... I would have brought pictures, but she doesn't show up on film. <laughs> Nine months She's old. A killer. Yeah. Did you share with the all-night feedings of the child? I or... still do. Do you? Yeah. yeah. And boy, are my arms tired. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, well, we, uh, my wife decided not to breastfeed very long because of this child. So you took it over? Uh, no, we started working uh, formula early on. Oh, okay. You don't want yeah. the details. <laughs> and you've got a three-year-old around the house, too, don't you? This is, this was you like great. This? Yeah, I have, love this. I was very disappointed. Mm -hmm. Stole my act. I was going to throw up all over everybody when we got here. <laughs> <laughs> Took the whole thing away from me. So is that, you know... <laughs> No, please, I've got a ghost running around here already. I'm afraid she's going to do that at some point. Okay. You know, did you see the ghost at I, all? I thought it was a ghost. Yeah, yeah she came, she harassed me, she walked by. And well, I don't was understand like, it, yeah. Well, what uh, happened? How did, how did that happen? I how did she, it come up? She got to canceled you know? off of, I don't know, I canceled or something. Probably I'm network show. Yeah. There's some story to this, yeah. Probably NBC. Are there any great stories from <laughs> It's a Living? Are there any great stories from It's a Living? No. No, no I didn't. I wondered about that. Because... No. Well, the history is interesting. You know, we started off as an ABC show. We did the pilot in 1980 when I was seven, I think. I yeah, think. yeah. Mm -hmm. And yeah. Uh, we got canceled at the end of the first year because they couldn't figure out why we weren't killing our competition, Scoot. And they moved us to another night, and then we found out that our competition was Magnum P.I., and that's oh. probably why we didn't kill them. Yeah. Uh, and then we came back the next year. They changed the name to Making a Living, because making is a funnier word than mm -hmm. it's a, yeah. it has a K sound in it. <laughs> it's a comedy rule. And so, um, and then we changed a few cast members, and we came back. We did another 14 episodes, and then they canned us again. Oh and gosh. then three and a half years later, a man named Bob Jacobs came up with the idea to put us in first run syndication. And we are now finishing our fourth year in first run syndication. Well, that was kind of a trailblazing thing, wasn't it? Yeah! I have to ask you, because Camp Midnight has not been on long enough to be canceled yet, but uh, <laughs> who comes and tells you that the show's over? Well, we, f we found out uh, after we were out of production, but you know, they're always incredible ways it happens. Sometimes you'll be in the middle of a rehearsal and someone will just walk in and say, don't bother. <laughs> or you'll drive into the parking lot and they'll be erasing the name off your parking space. I mean, that, okay. these things have happened to people. All right, yeah, let me get those down. I'll be watching for those, okay? Watch for those. Yeah. Actually, this is our last year. We will not continue making new It's a Living's. I'm sorry. Aww. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> you're, you're sorry. <laughs> <laughs> what do you want to do now? You're a, you, you'll I don't be a free know. man I've, soon. I've been directing a bunch of them, which yeah. has been great. And uh, I'm looking for a new series. Uh, and I'd like to do some directing of television. I like it. You, you like TV better, better than movies? Well, I haven't really done any films. I almost did a film, and I guess I was lucky I didn't. I almost did Rhinestone. <laughs> oh, really? Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> uh, and I'm Jewish. <laughs> but, but I almost did Rhinestone, but I didn't. Uh, but there's something about television that I like because it's so fast. You know, in a week's time, you do a play. You do the half hour beginning, and it's over. And you, you edit it for a couple of days, but that's basically it. Then you do it again. You do it over again with a new script and that's fun. A film is a year in pre-production and then you shoot it and then they spend however long putting it together afterwards and as much as I'd love to do one, knowing my energy level, I think that that would drive me crazy. Yeah. As if I wasn't. <laughs> but you know, I, I'm very happy doing television and, uh, and I'd like to continue doing television. Well, good luck on doing well, that. Your, your wife, Catherine, she's a performer, right? She's yes, a my wife, Kate, is, is a dancer actress. Uh, did a lot of Broadway and some films. She did uh, she was in the movie of Jesus Christ Superstar when mm -hmm. she was a child, mm -hmm. and she was in Stain of Live, Stain Alive when she was a little older. Yeah. And on Broadway, she did Chorus Line and Pippin and Dancing. And, you know. Well, how does it work out now? Yeah, with a family, with a couple of kids at home. <laughs> how do you all work out? Both of you doing what you want to do career-wise, or? Uh... Well, right now I've been the busy one in terms of having the series, yeah. uh, and now that that's ending, she's going. And now that the uh, the baby's nine months old, she'll become more active. Yeah. Again, it's fine. I love being at home playing with the kids. I was going to bring my son. I should have brought my son. He's great. He's three years old. He's a wonderful child. Very sweet. We call him Mahatma Kreppel. 
<laughs> he really is. He really any problem with him at all? Uh, no, no, you just get him to eat. Okay. Um, all right. <laughs> <laughs> no, he, he's really a, a joy, which is amazing, because they're so different. We have the baby from hell and Mahatma Kreppel. It's there like, you go. It's a, we got them all. The Kreppel them. family. What's the Kreppel family do for fun as a group? Uh, uh, we just kind of hang out, you know, jump in the hot tub. There you go, huh? And learn how to swim. The California family. What's the Wilson family, family do for fun? We, you uh, ever see them anymore? We watch you in your hot tub through the fence. <laughs> <laughs> is that you? Yeah, this is a low-budget show. <laughs> we do a lot of hot tub peeking. Paul, would you do one thing before you get out of here? I don't know. What is that? Would you what? take a physical for us right here on camera? <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Here. Sure. Would, would you be you a glass? Bite and sign a cup for us, all right? Bite and sign a cup. Paul Kreppel on Camp Midnight. Yeah. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Tommy Tang's food coming up in a little bit. Hang on. Shoot the cup. Here tonight, boy, we got a great show for you next Friday night. Hope you can be with us when Robin of uh, Batman, Burt Ward, will be here. Also, uh, yeah, comedian Lois Bromfield will be here also. A thousand curses on your head! A thousand! Oh, hang on a minute. Excuse me, we're trying to do a show here now. I'd appreciate it if you just, like, get lost, all right? Boom! <laughs> I don't know how to tell you this. Scared you? Wait, I don't know how to break this to you, but you're not scary. Oh, come on, tough guy. You know I am. I'm, wait a minute, huh? No, 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 I'm, I'm not dead. even sure you're a ghost. I'm not even sure you're a ghost. Well, Warren, do we have time for this? Uh, yeah, you got about two minutes, Dave. I was yes! afraid of that. All right, sit down. Come around here. Sit down just a minute. Let's get to the bottom of this. Hot story. damn. Here. I tell you what, let's take care of this real quick, huh? Let's take care of this just real quick. Can you prove to me that you're a ghost? So we do something ghostly, something spooky. Okay, watch this tough guy. I'm gone! No. Can't see me! You're still here. She's still here? Yeah, she's still here. Uh, you're oh, still here. Jesus. What? I tell you. Whoa, it hurts. Why don't you just tell me, who in the heck are you? It was 60 years ago today. I, Emily Powell, silent film star, died in this very studio. It was a very dangerous situation. And every year, February 3rd, I come back and I haunt the place. So, that's the story. Uh, well, tell me, uh, how, did, how did you die? Uh, well, I think I have a clip. Wait a minute, you got to hold it, a ghost with a clip? Brad, wait a minute. This is out of hand. Wait, you, you got a clip in there from a ghost? Yeah, it just sort of appeared. Brad, my man! Well, do you need to set this up at all? Uh, well, I was filming one of my uh, shows, The Perilous Problems of Shirley, and uh, I, I do my own stunts, and I think really the clip speaks for itself, but we could just roll it, Brad. All right, okay. Let's take a look. Okay, I'm being chased by a man. Yeah. Down the stairs. That's me. I did that. Oh. They don't do that anymore. That was me. I'm up. I'm okay. But you're not dead. No, I'm not dead. No. Keep watching. I still look good. Hardly blemished. I'm running across. He's still chasing me. He's still chasing me. It's still good to watch you getting yeah. there. Uh -huh. Dollar bill in the what street. Dollar in the Soup. street. I pick it up. Watch. Okay. Yeah, well, I see. You're not dead yet. No, 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 no. I was actually run over. I'm running. I book. Okay. Cliff. Watch. Watch. Uh, you thought that was it? Gee. I'm okay. You're still not dead. I'm okay. Always in. Always. Okay? Okay. Well, that's it. So you're not... What? You didn't Wait a minute. Watch. 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 Sandwich is lunchtime. What? Fishbone! Fishbone? Fishbone! What? I'm choking! Oh! And I choke! Oh, man, man, man. <laughs> well, 
it's still very hard to watch. It's a... <laughs> It's a very fine little piece of movie. I'm sure it was a great movie, but I'm sorry. It just doesn't prove to me that you're dead now. Don't make me do it one more time, Dixter. Come on. Prove okay, it watch. Me. I'm going to disappear. Take me home, Mama. No, nope, I'm sorry, folks. I'm gone. No, she's, 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 you're, you're, you're still here. You're still here. What? Uh, why do you haunt this studio? Uh, well, it's just kind of the thing I do. I come back every year and I scare people like yourself. Uh, last year I came back with Jimi Hendrix and I made Bonnie Franklin cough up blood. Uh, I, well, thanks a lot. It was a lovely little piece of movie that we saw. All right, just give me one more chance. Let me do it. Uh, watch this now. Yes! I don't know. No, this uh, time I can feel it happening. Oh, wait a minute. She's gone from. All right, it looks like it is kind of scary. You okay, it. our own in studio ghost, Emily Powell, folks. Yeah. 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 You all right, Emily? Thank yeah. you so much. Thank man, you. oh man, oh man. Oh, I tell you. Mm, yeah, I tell you, I don't know about you all, but when I get thinking of spirits and stuff, I start getting hungry. And the food is here from Tommy Tang's. Huh? It's Tommy. Tommy, there. Hey, All there right. How are you? How are you doing, Tommy? Good, good. Hang on a minute here, okay? Let me get a little something so we can hear you. Tommy, thanks for you. We asked for you personally to deliver this, the Thai food from Tommy Tang's. Thanks for doing that. Huh? Oh, it's my pleasure. As soon as I heard this, it's going to be midnight camp. I said, come on, I got to go. All right. <laughs> yeah, that's wonderful. Hey, you got, uh, you've got a restaurant here in L.A. Where's the other one? The other one in Manhattan, New York. Oh, really? Do you go back and forth between the two? Back and forth, back and forth. And I'll leave you again tomorrow morning, go back to cook in Thailand for a couple of days. Really? All right. Oh, well, you, you brought kind of the Thai food thing to America. How did this all get started? Well, actually, it started out of the Vietnam War when a lot of Asian influx from, you know, on a, a Thailand yeah, and uh -huh. Vietnam and Laos and all the stuff like that. And Thai food, was, uh, 10 years ago, nobody knew anything about Thai food at all. Mm -hmm. And it's like, well, you know. Seen a lot of you know veterans that come from Thailand and from Vietnam say, God, we can get some spicy food somewhere. Huh. So why so not? That's a story. Well, you've, you've done great and a lot of success. Show us what we've got here. Let me just lift the plate. Uh, you want to go with this plate first? Is that okay? okay. Let's, Let's just look at this one. Tuna roll, which a lot of people say, wow, where's a California roll? Well, everybody do California roll. Why should I have to do all California roll? I just create a spicy roll. Wonderful. Spicy tuna roll, which is much better. By the way, spicy food made a better lover. Oh, oh really? <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Tommy. Okay, and, and this is right here. And this is chicken saute with uh, our, you know, house famous peanut dressing. It smells wonderful. You folks at home, tough luck. You can't smell well, this, Well, huh? taste it. <laughs> yes, and taste it also. Well, that's wonderful. Well, Tommy, thank you for bringing that by. Oh, it's my pleasure. It. All right, thank you. And uh, what we'll do is we'll invite the uh, you folks all up to have a little something if you'd like. Okay. Come on, don't don't push, shy. don't shove. And thank you, Tommy. All right, okay. And at the same time, let me just talk to you a moment about something here. Come on up, folks. Don't be sh don't be shy. We've got our network stipulation video while we're dining in the studio, and you all are watching at home. Thanks. This is something that they make us do in the big tower there in New York City. Uh, tonight, our net uh, network stipulation video is called Punk Rock Girl by the Dead Milkmen. And uh, yeah, it's, uh, uh, we've got a question, a video question while this is going on, so watch closely and answer this question, please. It's a toughie. Here it is. If you combine the first name of a famous Nixon with the last name of one of Cher's ex-husbands, what name do you get? Watch closely. It's Punk Rock Girl. <laughs> Punk Rock Girl. The Dead Milkman, the answer to our video question, Scooter, I know you're following along on this, was Mojo Bono, of course, Mojo Nixon. That's not quite the answer I had. And Sonny Bono. Check your notes on that, would you? Hey, if you said that, folks, get yourself a free fresca somewhere in somebody's refrigerator, and uh, if you know what it means, please write me and tell me, because I'm completely lost on this whole thing. We'll be back in just a minute. We've got magician Larry Wilson, and you're going to love him on Camp Midnight. <laughs> USA Network. I'm Dick Wilson. Still to come tonight, we have uh, a, a Don Glute, dinosaur expert, and also music group Legal Reigns will be in the studio with us performing. Right now, though, I'd like to introduce our next guest, and he's a unique guy. And when I say unique, I mean he's just plain weird. Now, luckily, he's a magician, so he gets paid for it. That's nice. So let's give a hearty high, high camp midnight yeehaw to Larry Wilson. <laughs> Please, 
it's not at all necessary. Good evening. How is everyone? We don't have time to get into that. I'm going to attempt something here, I think the likes of which none of you will ever hope to see repeated again here. But um, to do this, I'm going to need the assistance of someone from your audience, someone who is willing to loan me a $20 bill. Is there someone? Perhaps you, madam? Would you be so kind? This one with the glasses? Do you have $20 on yeah. you? Yeah. Thunderous applause. Come up here. Come up here. Stand on this side of me, my darling. Thank you. Do you have a $20 bill I could borrow from you? What is your name, dear? Vicky. Vicky, thank you for... Do you really have $20? Here's what I want you to do. Have you got something to write with? Yeah. You're I supposed do. to. I want you to look at uh, the serial number here on this bill. There's a letter followed by a... What have you got, a 20? Fine. That's an uh, eight-digit uh, number and another letter. If you'd read that out, I want you to write this down for me. I'll do it. All right, I'll check to make sure you're both doing okay. this right. Fire away, Vic. C92... Uh, 620-172-A. 172-A. I've got it. I think Good. I've got it. All right. Now, I also have here a number of envelopes. I'd like you to look inside for me, if you could, Vicki. I want you to tell the audience here, and of course the audience at home, exactly what you find inside each one. Well, I don't know if I can get this open. Here. Take a look in there. Tell me what you find inside that one. Nothing. Absolutely right. Oh. And in this one? Nothing. Correct. And in the last envelope? Nothing. Indubitably. Now, what I want you to do, I want you to wander upstage here where no one can see what you're doing, particularly me, and I want you to put your bill inside one of those envelopes and then seal them. I think they're gum, so you can close them and they'll stay gum. Okay. And then seal the other two the same so I cannot tell which one has your bill and which one hasn't. All right? Just wander up there. All right. Anywhere. No one can see what you're doing. Now, I should point out, of course, this is not the sort of thing you should attempt at home. I'm a professional. I know exactly what I'm doing. Unless, of course, you can get people to give you money who you've never met before. In which case, <laughs> go wild. Now, I don't want to turn around, Vicky, until you tell me that you've actually sealed all these up. Yes, of course. <laughs> Have you done this now? All right. Take all the time in the world. Just remember, this is what we call professionally dead time. <laughs> Not that there's anything wrong with that, of course. It's late at night. This is maybe a good time to go to the kitchen, get a snack. Oh, all right. You're back. Good. All right. Now, give me those envelopes. You should have absolutely no idea which one contains your bill. If I were to shuffle them up like this, you really couldn't tell now, could you? All right, I want you to just pick one at random then. Of these three, which one do you think your bill is in? This one. This one here? Wrong. We're going to do it again. All right, let me just give him a little mix. All right, tell me again now which one you think has your bill in it. This one? This one? Did you come by yourself? <laughs> yeah. You did? Where were you sitting? Good. All right, fine. This is the envelope you selected. Hang on to this very, very tightly. A a please, it'll break her heart. Now, you had a completely free choice of any of the envelopes you wanted. You happened to choose that one. You took the two that you didn't choose, a slight scientific application of heat, and, well, I guess they're gone. Open that envelope and tell the audience what's inside. <laughs> Nothing. Nothing. Have you got a 15? It, no, no, I'm kidding, of course. I don't expect to leave you empty handed. What if I were to give you something, Vicky, that was worth at least $20? What? Well, it's not that kind of show. You just sort of have to go for it. Because back here, Vicky, I'm just going to wheel this forward, is a lovely, brand new, bright yellow. Jello mold disintegrating in the light. What? Wait, can you see there's something in there? Yeah. It, Vicky, reach in there. Oh, God. Reach into there. Tell me, can you pull out what that is? <laughs> it's a $20 bill. Vicky, tell me, can you see the serial number on there? Yes. Can you read it? Yes. Tell me this. Does it start with a C? Yes. Is there a 926? Is there a 201? Yes. Is there a 7? Yes. And then a 2 is the letter A? <laughs> yes. Isn't that amazing? 
Here you are, my darling. Thank you. You get to keep this as a souvenir. It's your $20 bill. Wrap it up in that towel, courtesy of Camp Midnight. Always a pleasure. The show that is not only educational, but nutritious as well. A thunderous round of applause for this woman, please. Thunderous. All right, Larry. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh. Ah. Larry Wilson. First off, we are not related at all. Dick Wilson, Larry Wilson, as far as we know. Is that no, right? just one of those strange coincidences of life. And I know that that's okay because you don't want to be me, I don't want to be you, I don't want to, you know. Let's keep it. We'll, we'll keep our own side of the fence. Here. Well, of yeah. course. How did you do that? Come on, tell us. Don't you hate it when people ask that? No, I think that's fine, but I can't really tell you yeah. because it would be boring. <laughs> It'd be really, really boring. The uh, one thing that I wanted to ask you about because I know there is a place you can go in Los Angeles where all you magicians get together and you share ideas and things, and I could learn these kind of things. The magic Well, puzzle. Dick, right. I don't know if you could learn them. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, of course, uh, a normal human might be able to. What is, the Magic Castle, what is it? It's the a magic, private club or something. The Magic Castle is a private club for magicians and their guests. It's in Hollywood, and it's, uh, it's a very wild place. It's like no place else in the world, really. It's um, built by magical enthusiasts, and uh, those are the people who hang out there. It's very strange to be there because... Whereas in this audience, I am the only magician here mm -hmm. in the Magic Castle. The place is crawling with magicians. It's lousy with magicians. How magician. do they react? How, what kind of an audience are fellow magicians? Oh, they're very, very good. <laughs> because usually, like me, I mean, I love to see stuff that fools yeah. me. And uh, they're the same way. I mean, they're really a very, very good audience. You don't get a lot of, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, 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 oh, yeah. Well, it depends on what you're doing. I mean, for instance, now that thing there... Um, Nobody else in the world I know, some people do a thing where they'll borrow something and it disappears, mm -hmm. but usually it's in a very uh, sophisticated or uh, dignified kind of presentation. It's found inside a specially sealed box or something, but nobody has inside a jello mold. Ooh, uh, you know? yeah. that, that's wonderful, and, and my favorite, too. Lemon jello? The, the lemon kind. Well, you know, I thought since Tommy Tang's people brought out that food, the entire audience is welcome to just... A little dessert, that'd be fine. It's yeah. really, really gross. Will you come back and do some more magic for us someday? We'd love to have you back. Sure, what day do you have in mind, Dick? Uh, how about, uh, <laughs> let me get with the schedule. All right, All right. good. That yeah, sounds fun. we got an fun. opening, don't we? Sure. Uh, all right. Okay. Good. Larry Wilson, thank you very much. Would you B and S bite and sign a cup before you leave for us? Bite and sign a cup. Bite and sign. For be our my, wall be of my pleasure. Fame. Thank you. Yeah. Whoa. Okay. Yeah. Thanks. <laughs> my pleasure. Right back, folks. Say network. I'm, I'm so excited because our next guest that we have tonight is making his television debut right here in Los Angeles on Camp Midnight. He's the latest in a long line of public figures from G. Gordon Liddy to Fawn Hall who have made the very serious yet dangerous move, but a uh, very profitable move from civic affairs to the world of entertainment. He's a fundamentalist Muslim fanatic, a would-be dictator, and a funny, funny man. Please welcome Libyan strongman Colonel Muammar Gaddafi. <laughs> Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. It's great to be here. Just got through invading Chad. Boy, are my arms tired. <laughs> hit me, Scooter! Hey, hit me twice, music man! All right, all right, all right. Oh, no, 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 really, really, really. Imagine, don't 7-Eleven stores just drive you crazy, huh? You know? I mean, you know, in my country, they all speak perfect English. <laughs> this thing on here, hello, hello. Oh, really, really. No, I'll tell you, this is a true story, true story. The other day, <laughs> I went into uh, a 7-Eleven, you know, and uh, this clerk comes up to me and says to me, uh, <clears throat> You are Moammar Gaddafi? <laughs> <laughs> so Moammar sounds like Malomar, which is a kind of a cookie. <laughs> you know, it's halava, right? <laughs> it's a true story. So I buried him up to his neck in the burning desert sands where the vultures will pick out his eyeballs, scorpions will lay their eggs in his blistering skin, and his, his entire progeny will dry up and bleed and die on the face of the earth. Thank you, you've been a terrific audience, ladies and gentlemen. Good night. Oh, man, oh, man. 
champion strongman, Muammar Gaddafi, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, I'm so thrilled to have you. Great, great uh, stuff. Thank Colonel. you very much. Yeah. You know, the, uh, the act is really falling into place, I tell you. Yeah. Yeah, like those two MiG jets that fell into the Mediterranean. You crossed the line of death. Your worthless life is forfeit. You are the devil. You are the devil. You are the devil. You're a beautiful cat, Nicola. Let me tell you, I want to tell you. I love gigging on your hep show. Well, Colonel, uh, so the career's coming along nicely, huh? Oh, yeah, you know, I tell you, except, uh, except when I'm bombing. Oh, except when I'm bombing. Hit me, Scooter! <laughs> Colonel, Colonel, I, oh, I know, yeah. you know, you started out in a very different area of show business. Oh, oh no, 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 you don't want to hear that. You don't want to hear about yeah, that, do you? Yeah. yeah. Hey, oh, hey, oh, no, who oh, can no. forget Circus Vargas? Oh, I know, I know. Strong <laughs> man Gaddafi, the circus man. Let me tell you something. Well, I've been going way beyond that. I'm more of a complete performer now. <laughs> well, I, I tell you what. How about it, folks? What do you think? Come on. How about a little of the old man of steel? Oh, no, 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 no. You I, don't want to see. What, 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 no, no. Yeah, you know. come on. Strong oh. is Libyan Colonel Muammar Gaddafi. Oh, you, you, you know, you've got me between Iraq and a hard place. Iran, Iraq, and a hard place. Give me a kiss, go to pie. Oh. Uh, all right, all right. Come on, do it. Show you a little of the Hercules strength here. Yeah, do it for it. Man of Steel. The old Man of Steel. Colonel, now you sure you want me to do this? Absolutely. I'm not a good shot, all right? Oh, gee, oh man. Colonel, are you all right? You okay? Oh. <laughs> wow. Man, oh man. That's wonderful. I tell you, man, you are really strong, but of course, smell isn't everything. Oh, you crazy fool! I can't believe you're telling me this! You cross every line of death! You're crazy! You're insane! I'm going to get a flaming sword, and a progeny will sweep you and your entire family and everybody from the face of the earth! I'll be in Lake Tahoe from the 23rd to the 28th, and I'll be at Caesar's Palace opening for Sammy. Thank you for the terrific audience. Salam alaikum, good night. All right. Yeah, there he goes. Lydian strongman, Muammar Gaddafi. Oh. What an incredible, incredible act, folks. Yeah. Scooter, I need to take a break for just a moment. Okay, thanks. <laughs> My next guest is an amateur paleontologist, and I worked all day to say that, uh, and also an author of the Dinosaur Dictionary and the Dinosaur Scrapbook. He's uh, brought with him some neat dinosaur stuff to look at, and uh, so let's bring him along, Mr. Don Glute. Don, come on out. How are you? Right, good. Thank you. You know, I, everywhere I look, Don, um, I see dinosaur stuff all over the place now. Stickers, buttons, T-shirts. Why are dinosaurs so popular now all of a sudden? Well, they've always been popular. They've been popular for over 150 years, but they're at an all-time high now. And I think there's several, several reasons for this. One is um, in the last 10 years have been a lot of really spectacular and important discoveries that have, that have gotten a lot of media coverage, made the newspapers, television, everything. But also, I think uh, there's been so much high tech in the media in the last 10 years with Star Wars and uh, video games and robots and things. I think people are finally getting tired of some of that and maybe getting back mm -hmm. to some basics. You've written a couple of books on dinosaurs. What, uh, what topics did you work on? Those? Well, I did uh, two dinosaur books that were simply um, dictionaries from A to Z. And uh, I did another one that, was, that handled dinosaurs in the public eye in movies, comic books, uh, amusement parks, that sort of thing. And then I did a, th a fourth one which was about an artist named Charles R. Knight, who was the artist who gave the world the first modern perception of dinosaurs. What was our perception before that? Well, bef before that, uh, artists created some really fanciful reconstructions, things that were based on a tooth, a, a piece of horn or something, and they turned, turned out these incredible things that had no basis in reality. What Knight did was he worked with the scientists, plus he was a fine artist, so he brought an artistic sense to the science and had a happy marriage of the two and gave the world the first realistic view of what dinosaurs were thought to have looked like 
uh, back then. Now, uh, you collect a lot of dinosaur bones and scientific stuff. Where do you keep all this? Well, I keep it in my house, but the house is getting smaller and smaller <laughs> every day. What, have you ever gone on a dig, a dinosaur dig? I, I went on one. It wasn't really a dinosaur dig. It was a, uh, it was a mammal dig, but it was extinct mammals up yeah. in Orange County somewhere. And I actually found a uh, part of a, uh, a new species of extinct porpoise. But I'm not really an outdoorsy type of person. I like the, you know, air conditioning and plumbing and that sort of thing. You don't get that on digs too often. You're sleeping in a tent in a sleeping bag <laughs> and no 7-Eleven down the street. Well, you've brought some things for us to look at. Yeah. Can we take a, let's take a little walk sure. over to the display area and see what we've got here. All right, come on over this way. And, uh... oh, that, no, no, please. It's just walking. Please, no. It's just walking is all. Well, what have we here? Let's just work across. Well, the there's a lot of, there's a variety of things. This is what I believe the first dinosaur toy ever made. This was made in 1920. It was part of a series called Twist Toys, and you can see why they were called that. And, um, is that they, metal? Yeah. No, it's actually wood. This wood was actually made in California somewhere. But this is the earliest toy I know with a dinosaur on it. What date would you put on that? What do you 1920. Mean? 20? Okay. Yeah. This is um, a reproduction, a cast reproduction of what they think is the front claw. It could be the hind claw, but they think it's the front claw of a new type of flesh-eating dinosaur from Great Britain called a baryonyx. And this had enormous claws. I mean, this is just, had, just had gigantic yes. claws. And with the horny covering that would cover this in life, this claw would probably be about out to here. So you wouldn't want to meet one of them. No, but an incredible back scratcher. Wouldn't that have been great? <laughs> <laughs> this is, um, you know, in, in the old days, we had real crude model kits. This shows you what kind of model kits they're making now. This is uh, from a company called Kyoto in Japan. Mm -hmm. and they're real difficult to make and they're real difficult to paint. Luckily, I got this one already assembled. How long did it take you to put this together? And, uh, it didn't take me any time at all because they gave it to me this way. Oh, okay, uh, good. This is a, uh, <laughs> the way I like models, too. <laughs> a Styracosaurus. <laughs> what this is, um, let's look at this. This is a jawbone, a lower jaw. We're looking at it upside down. Okay. You can see the teeth here. A reproduction, again, in fiberglass of the lower jaw of a Tyrannosaurus. This is from the second largest Tyrannosaurus skull ever found, and the oh, whole skull goodness. would be somewhere around five feet long, which I have Gee. in my den. Oh, man. So the whole animal itself would have been about how long? Oh, 40 feet. And this is an animal that could probably run up to 35, 40 miles an hour. Was this the two-legged kind? Yeah, this is uh, the largest of, of that sort. Were they the most terrifying uh, dinosaur, you know, the, the ones that ripped up the other ones the most? Or? Well, in terms of sheer size and power, this would probably have been about the, the most uh, formidable of them all. But there were smaller dinosaurs that were flesh-eating dinosaurs that were probably a lot more vicious mm -hmm. um, because they were more agile and they had, uh, there was one called a Deinonychus, which had a claw that it carried off the ground, a hind claw. And it used it simply for disemboweling its victims. It would, it would grab you from the top, like, and, you know, if it, if it meant you would grab you on your shoulders, then it would disembowel you with the hind feet. Mm. So that was a pretty nasty creature. Careful with that, folks. <laughs> okay. This, this is interesting. This is a comic book that was published in 1954. And this is the comic book uh, that inspired me as a kid to uh, pursue an interest in prehistoric animals. And mm. it was done mm -hmm. by an artist named Joe Kubert, who also wrote it. And it was very ahead of its time, and it's one of my prized possessions. Was it a one-time publication, or did they make a series of them? It lasted about five or six issues, two of which were in 3D. He yeah. was also one of the pioneers of 3D comics. Okay. Well, we've got just about 30 seconds. So let me ask you one quick thing, uh, and we don't always mean to talk about this on Camp Midnight, but it always comes up. What about dinosaur mating? Was there like earthquakes or what? I mean, it seems like these animals were so large. Well, uh, it makes you wonder when you see an animal like that. Yeah, how, how really. I mean, we're, I mean, I can't even think of dating something like this. <laughs> um, well, obviously they did it because yeah. they, they survived for 140 million years. Which is longer than we've been here so yeah. far, right? Yeah. Don, thank you very much for thank joining you. us on Camp Midnight. All right, Don Glute, dinosaur expert. Get back in a minute. We're very excited to uh, welcome to Camp Midnight and present our, very uh, our next guest, a very special warm welcome, if you would, please. And they're going to do their next single for us, and uh, I know you've had a chance to hear it a bit, and it's going to sound good tonight, called Wait for Fire Burning. Please welcome Arista recording artist, Legal Reigns. All right, good. Well, good luck to you, Thank folks. You. Arista recording artist, Legal Reigns. Here they are right here on Camp Midnight. Take a bow.
be back with more Camp Midnight in just a little bit right here on the USA Network. Scooter, where do you get those cheap sunglasses, huh? Those are cheap dudes. I spent a lot of money for these. I'll bet so. You're always having to match your shirt, though. That's the wonderful part. Yeah. All right, Scooter. Good job. What a wonderful show we've had tonight. Hope you got to watch the whole thing, folks. You can go to bed now if you'd like. Just, but just a minute. Hang on a minute, because I want to thank a couple people. First off, Kerry Mitchum, our guest. Also, David Strassman. Paul Kreppel, Larry Wilson, the magician, Don Glute, the dinosaur man. Thank you, Don, for coming down on a last-minute call when we called you this afternoon and said, hey, come on down, bring some bones, Don. Thank you. <laughs> Legal range, you're great. We'll look forward to your success. Our regulars, Tony Forkush and Caroline Schlitt. Caroline, even though she played the part of our ghost tonight, is honest to goodly sicker than a dog here tonight. And she actually looks really like that. We used no makeup on her tonight. <laughs> next week, a good show we got for you next week. We're going to have Burt Ward, Robin, the boy wonder, uh, Louis Bromfield, a comedian, Paul Wilson from the TV series It's Gary Shandling Show, Freddie Wellman, the Tupperware Lady of Sex, and also Jerry Hussein from the TV series Head of the Class. Remember to write us if you'd like to. USA's Excuse Camp Midnight. Yeah, what? I think you said Louis Bromfield. We have Louis Bromfield. Oh, I'm sorry. Lewis is my uncle. He said that he'd give me 10 bucks if I'd mentioned him on the show. Lois Bromfield, the comedian. We'll see you next week right here on Camp Midnight.